Good evening everyone and welcome. I am Divya Gopalakrishnan and on behalf of Kerich I welcome you to our today's discussion on housing finance companies secular growth trends and receding credit risks to start off renewed growth. We sincerely appreciate your time in joining us for this webinar. We would like to welcome our esteemed guest speakers for today. Mrs. Sudeep Tosil, Chief Financial Officer and Head of Investor Relations. LIC Housing Finance Limited Mr Ghanshyam Rawat co-founder president and chief financial officer Avas Financiers Limited and Mr Sanjesh Kumar EVP and credit head Federal Bank This session will be moderated by Sanjay Agarwal senior director Carriage Ratings We will commence this session with a presentation by Geeta Chenani associate director Carriage Ratings This will be followed by a panel discussion and a Q&A session. In case of queries, participants are requested to key in in your panel. We will take up your queries during the panel discussion. Now may I invite Geeta to make her presentation please? Thank you Divya. Good evening everyone. Today in this presentation We shall cover the macro factors that are aiding the demand and overall sales velocity which has led to rise in residential launches which has in turn led to rebound in growth for housing finance companies with growth returning and asset quality issues waning profitability is gradually nearing to pre covid levels let's look at the factors that are driving the growth in housing finance while strong drivers such as improving affordability rising urbanization low mortgage to gdp ratio favorable demographics and government policies have been traditional underlying growth factors shift in post pandemic consumer behavior preference such as preference for open living spaces premiumization as well as other factors like low interest rates stamp duty rebates resulted into an up cycle in residential real estate market In the chart to the right we can see uptick in residential launches and sales since current year of 22 despite cumulative repo rate hikes by RBI to the extent of 250 basis between May 22 and Feb 23 residential demand has continued to remain strong and current year 23 has witnessed highest decadal sales volumes Speaking of surge in sales volumes in sync with rebound in residential real estate market retail loans started witnessing uptick from FY22 consequently the AUM growth has since been led by retailization during FY23 overall AUM of HFCs grew by roughly 9% with housing segment growing by 13% while the non housing portfolio including developer financing contracted marginally the total outstanding portfolios of hfcs as on 31st march 2023 stood at rupees 7.4 lakh crore excluding hdfc limited of which housing loans comprised rupees 5 and a half lakh crore vis-a-vis housing loans of scheduled commercial banks amounting to rupees 19.4 lakh crore if we look at the chart to the right the share of builder loans has been declining while retail loans has been rising in the overall portfolio mix post 2019 developer and nbfc hfc crisis developer portfolios of hfcs witnessed stress thereby resulting into a conscious curtailment apart from issues in developer financing growth in retail loans was also contributed by higher disbursements post regulatory guidelines on principal business of housing finance companies However, going forward in the backdrop of rising strong residential sales, shrinking pool of stressed developers and progressive resolutions and recoveries in the developer financing book, care edge rating opines that the share of developer financing is expected to gradually pick up in the medium term. Given the rebound in residential real estate market growth and receding credit costs, profitability indicators are inching up majority of the prime housing focused hfcs 
have passed on rate hikes to customers in tandem with rising cost of borrowings. With yield and advances rising faster than the cost of borrowings, HFC saw an improvement in margins during FY23. Improving margins, coupled with waning credit costs, has resulted into better profitability. For FY24, Care Edge Rating expects rota of HFCs to be near or marginally better than pre-COVID levels. Going forward, lenders are adopted to expected to adopt a calibrated approach between growth and asset quality. Further, anticipated interest rate cuts in FI25 are also expected to lead downward pressure on margins as portfolios reprice faster than borrowings. A look at the overall asset quality shows an improving picture. While the developer financing portfolios of HFCs started showing signs of stress post FI18, retail asset quality metrics witnessed deterioration led by pandemic-induced economic slowdown, which largely impacted the self-employed customers. However, with FI23 being the first full e year of economic recovery and improving demand, NPL levels have been slowly inching downwards. If you look at the chart to the right, net NPA net to net worth ratio of HFCs, two has improved from 16.6% as on March 31, 22, to 11.7% as on March 31st, 23, signifying improving balance sheet strength. Stage three provision cover ratio is also estimated to be at 42% and is expected to remain in the healthy range of 44 to 46% in the near to medium term, as HFCs continue to hold provisions so as to mitigate credit risks. A closer look into segment-wise NPA trajectory tells us how NPAs are improving and segments which are contributing to it. The chart to the left shows movement in asset quality of HFCs. The pool of gross NPAs which have been on a rising trend was seen reversing in FI23 onwards and is expected to improve further. While downside risks continue in the form of elevated interest rate risks, delayed resolutions recoveries within the wholesale loan portfolio, there are limited signs of imminent stress. While retail and wholesale NPAs continue to be above pre-COVID levels, asset quality of HFCs is on an improving trajectory. If we look at the chart to the right, the time periods from March 20 to 23 show improvement in both retail and wholesale NPA in basis points with March 19 and September 23 being the starting and end points. As we can see, FI23 has seen significant reduction in both retail and wholesale NPA levels. Slippages too improved both in absolute and relative terms, to 1.5% during FI23 from 2.6% in the previous year. While we have seen an improvement in the NPA, let's take a look at the softer bucket delinquencies. The chart to the left shows us the stress in wholesale portfolios, which comprises of softer delinquencies as well as the total NPA pool. Stress in wholesale portfolios of some HFCs, which started to rise post-18, peaked during FI22, and has started reducing since. Care Edge Ratings interactions with HFCs, as well as the monitoring commentaries, point to expectations of better resolutions and recoveries of hitherto stranded projects in the scenario of improved sales velocity. If we look at the chart to the right, the quantum of loans in stage through for HFCs has been declining year on year, implying receding asset quality stress. The percentage of stage one to improve to 92% as on March 31, 2023, from 89% in the previous year. Now, coming to the funding mix, 
While bank funding is expected to have a lion's share of the total funding profile of HFCs, funding from capital markets, which has remained range-bound over the last few years, is expected to rise. The chart to the right shows funding mix of HFCs in the total AUMs of debt mutual funds, while risk aversion within the debt mutual funds was already underway owing to credit crisis. The move gained further traction post winding up of few debt mutual fund schemes, as well as significant regulatory changes such as introduction of sectoral caps, etc., as well as narrowing credit spreads. This led to decline in debt mutual funds exposure to HFC sector. While the merger of HDFC Limited has further ex exacerbated this decline, the merger has opened up sectoral limits for debt mutual funds for further investments in the paper issued by HFCs. This, coupled with expectation of rate cuts during FI25, is expected to increase funding from capital markets in near to medium term. Now, let's take a look at the outlook. Continued growth momentum in housing loans coupled with expected revival in developer loans is likely to lead to credit growth of 12 to 14% for AHFCs. Segment-wise, while Care Edge Rating expects the share of wholesale financing of HFCs to rise in the medium term, it is broadly expected to remain in the range of 10 to 12% as HFCs embarked on cautious growth. Though NIMS may be marginally impacted, profitability is expected to improve, supported by portfolio growth and receding credit costs. Asset quality indicators expected to improve with no imminent asset quality stress. The downside risks to this outlook are regulatory changes, tighter liquidity, continuation of elevated interest rates, delayed resolutions and recoveries in the wholesale book, as well as competition faced from banks. On the borrowings front, with financiers looking to diversify their borrowings mix, the share of market borrowings is expected to rise. With this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you everyone for listening. I now hand it over to Ms. Divya. Thank you. Thank you, Geeta. As conveyed earlier, attendees are required to key in their questions, which we will take up during the panel discussion. Now, may I invite Mrs. Sanjay Agarwal to take over the session, please? Sanjay Agarwal is a senior director at Carriage Ratings. He has three decades of experience in the field of ratings, banking, and infrastructure finance. Currently, Sanjay is heading the BFSI vertical at Carriage Ratings. Prior to joining Carriage, he has worked at ICICI Bank and IFCI. He has a bachelor's degree in commerce and is a chartered accountant. He has also qualified as a grad CWA, a financial risk manager from GARP USA and as a certified financial planner from FPSB India. Over to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Divya. So it's my pleasure to welcome our uh, esteemed panelists. So I start with Mr. Sudipto Sil. Uh, Mr. Sudipto Sil is the Chief Financial Officer and Head of Investor Relationship for uh, LIC Housing Finance Limited. He has been associated with the company for more than 25 years now. Uh, he holds a bachelor degree in commerce and uh, studied from St. Xavier's College, Calcutta. He is a chartered accountant uh, and also has a management degree from the Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies, Bombay. Our next uh, panelist is Mr. Gansham Rawat. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, Mr. Rawat is a co-founder of Avas Financials, where he currently is the Chief Financial Officer and President. He has over two and a half decades of experience in finance, service and manufacturing companies of corporate finance and fundraising, treasury management, forex, interest rate risk management, mergers and acquisitions, finalization of accounts, IFRS, SAP systems, etc. And he has been associated with this company since uh, as a founder since the initial days of 2013. Mr. 
through the bachelor degree in commerce from uh, Rajasthan University and is a fellow member of the Institute of Charity Accountants of India. Our next panelist is Mr. Shanjish Kumar, who is the EVP and credit head of Federal Bank. Mr. Kumar is a senior banking professional with more than two decades of experience in wholesale banking across industries and across regions. He has comprehensive credit underwriting experience covering large, medium, small corporates and encompassing over 2,000 large, medium, small companies all over the country. Uh, welcome, uh, gentlemen, and uh, we'll start with our questions now. So my first question is to Mr. Sudip Tosir. Uh, we we look at the uh, sectorial breakup of the industry as uh, Gita had pointed out. So from an industry perspective, how do you see growth in wholesale loans by HFC, especially to real estate players? Uh, see, if you uh, uh, thank you, Sanjay, for uh, organizing this uh, event, and uh, also my uh, I uh, welcome the fellow panelists and participants. So as you have uh, in the opening uh, remarks, what uh, uh, Gita had uh, mentioned, uh, the, the, uh, the demand for wholesale uh, funding in the wholesale segment is perennial. Uh, we somehow uh, uh, you know, do not uh, recognize the fact that uh, real estate, like any other industry, is hungry for capital. And we as lenders, we'll have to fill in that uh, gap in whichever way we can in trying to satisfy the, the demand for capital, the demand for funding for the real estate sector is probably one of the largest across uh, various sectors. So, uh, and, and with some of the players, established players uh, kind of withdrawing or going a bit slow in that sector, I think there is a huge amount of appetite there. In the last uh, several years, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, improvement in the overall real estate, real estate sector. It is uh, starting from the the implementation of uh, the RERA. Uh, we have seen many of the builders uh, becoming much more professionalized, corporatized, uh, having access to other pools of capital. So I think going forward, the uh, demand for wholesale funding is certainly uh, going to be there. It is uh, for us lenders to actually structure it, understand the credit, structure it, and then uh, uh, support it uh, whichever way we, uh, we can. I think that is uh, how I look at the wholesale uh, sector. Okay. So now I move to Mr. Gansham Rawat now. So what is the opinion on the growth of uh, lab portfolio for banks and HSCs? So has that segment become more competitive or does it offer much better rates compared to mortgages? Thanks, Sanjay. Uh, we... we uh, you know, we are uh, all are mandated by RBI or NHP as a housing finance company. So, uh, no doubt we do uh, lab loan also. And AWAS, we do MSME loan also, basically, which is a uniqueness for the AWAS to do MSME loan. But as the overall framework from the RBI, we need to have certain percentage of a home loan, basically, which is a 60% of a, of a of balance sheet, which is very unique. Everybody is approaching to RBI, give us a 60% of AUM, but I think still it is a 60% of balance sheet to be maintained basically. So there is a limited scope to do non-home loan business or lab business uh, within a housing finance company basically. But everybody do some home loan or all those are backed by the mortgages basically. We have seen demon, we have seen uh, liquidity, uh, NBC, HFC, uh, crisis, we have seen COVID also, but I think lab portfolio also behaved. I'm talking the retail lab portfolio, which is a, let's say, every ticket size of somewhere, uh, 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 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 25 lakhs, is behave very well, behave very well. Or no doubt, it gives a better margin also, basically, uh, versus home loan. So uh, it's always a good product, good product. As a housing finance company, as a AWAS, we manage between 70 to 30, 70 is a core home loan, 30% is a non-home loan. In between, we keep 50% as MSME loan, basically. Uh, MSME loan become, again, a private sector, uh, <coughs> private sector portfolio, basically, which uh, I think, which is a, a lot of banks, a lot of banks uh, need that portfolio as assignment or as a, 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 a on lending funding also, basically. Yeah. So, uh, I, rural semi-urban area, I think, uh, 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 because in apart from India, uh, in, in, in when we go rural semi-urban area, 
uh, apart from home loan requirement, they have their own assets also basically, which uh, which they got as a parental, which they got anywhere. So they want to mortgage, or want to have a loan for the kids' education, kids' marriage, or other businesses also. So it become a very good product uh, 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 to to serve along with the home loan product in that market. Okay, thank you. I move over to Mr. Sanjay Kumar now. So, with the recovery in real estate market, what is your view on disbursement sanction pipeline for both retail and wholesale segments of the housing finance business now? Thank you, Sanjay. <clears throat> uh, see, uh, we need to look at various data points, uh, especially uh, real estate and housing loan or home loan. They still continue to be the first option for many of the individuals. If you look at the total banking credit on the uh, last two years, say uh, CY21 to CY23, overall banking has grown by 38 odd percent as a loan. <coughs> and if you put another benchmark to understand how much of personal loan has growth, so personal loan growth is around 50-55% of that. Now, you, when you come back to see that how much of housing loan growth has happened, so housing loan growth is higher than these two benchmarks, around 58 to 60%. So that still says as the individual or as the market has a huge potential. This also, if you look at from uh, go to commercial real estate space, even that segment has grown in last two calendar year post COVID around 40, 45% as a growth rate. So market is growing in terms of origination. If you look at between these two calendar period, the ticket size has grown by 10% as well as the uh, logins has been grown by 50%. So this very clearly says the pipeline is strong, a good borrower and the good lender, there's enough scope to grow this segment and the business. Rightly said in your presentation that credit cost is coming down. In fact, if you look at one more data point to understand how, how this behavior is coming, so if you look at especially to new to credit segment and their behavior, tremendously approved. So new to credit who did not have history within a year, they had moved into by 40 to 50% of the segment has moved to prime and near prime category. So even behavior of those NTC customers is also quite increasing. <clears throat> so as a banker or as a banking industry, uh, it has always been an, a way to grow. Focus is there, logins are there. And every segment is growing. Even if you look at from NBFC within bracket HFC, that however they grow, they had also grown by 25% in these two calendar years. So growth is there. There's no dearth. Uh, firmly say that uh, those past issues are in past now. The baggage is gone. Future is bright. How do you see the wholesale uh, assets on the space going, the real estate and others? If you uh, if you look at from purely from construction finance perspective, uh, bankers are a little bit choosy. No debate on that piece. But uh, the choosing has come from the past experience and uh, the behavior pattern of uh, various ways. The regulation has brought some amount of confidence back, including RERA and all. Uh, NCLT will still be some time tested because there are many products buying in NCLT for the solutions. However, the bankers are looking for a good set of a borrower who has a strong execution skill, who has a a right skin in the game. So very importantly, earlier is to happen, especially you look at the home loan side of the construction pre-project <coughs> uh, finance. So it was hugely forecasted basis a customer booking and a sale. If you look at the recent launches and the larger scale one, there's a good skin of money has come. So now the developers are putting 30-40% of their own equity to the project. So those things has come up, which is giving again a confidence. So if, if you are fitting into this execution track record and all, there is no dearth of the finance. They are easily availing the finance. And I can say even the even if you go to the ticket size of a thousand crore plus, finance is not in a problem if you have your proven execution this year. Great. Uh, so we come back to Mr. Sale. So with premiumization being the theme within residential purchase, so do you see an uptick in the ticket size of the housing loans? Yeah, certainly. Actually, if you look at uh, the way the the say, social economic development of the country is happening in the next uh, uh, maybe seven to eight years, or maybe even even uh, uh, faster than that, even earlier than that, the number, the per, uh, percentage of population who will be earning in the bracket of say ten thousand dollars to thirty five thousand dollars equivalent is going to increase significantly. 
it's almost a mind boggling kind of an increase that is one thing the other thing is that as of now also we are very much aware of the demographic dividend that demographic dividend of consumption is very much in favor of uh, of the country so if you read these two uh, uh, features together these two data points together and we try to interpret uh, i think premiumization is the way forward if you look into any other kind of uh, spend discretionary spend whether it's a uh, vehicle foreign travels any other kind of consumption consumption story and uh, premiumization i think on on discretionaries and uh, i would say large ticket purchases i think uh, that is certainly going to have a major impact on the uh, increasing in the uh, ticket sizes otherwise also we generally witness a 7 to 8% uh, increase in ticket size which is in line with the inflationary trend but uh, going forward i think you are going to see a much faster movement in the in this uh, improvement in uh, ticket sizes okay and uh, we uh, we have a lot of queries coming in from the uh, audience on uh, affordable housing so before that i would like to just uh, tell the audience a disclaimer that the panelists here have come in as experts in their respective industry in the industry of housing finance and the long experience there and they don't represent the views of the organizations in particular we are not discussing their organization they come when we discuss them in accrediting we discuss them separately to appraisals and national so right now we are discussing the industry and not the respective organizations so we come to mr rao at uh, first we uh, discuss our own question that with intense competition prime housing and cautious uh, let's say the caution uh, which is there on the developer financing apparently some of the prime housing companies and some banks have started looking for affordable housing for better spreads so how do you read the market on that sanjay uh, uh, i think this is uh, i think questions we we face day in day out from all investors and, uh, and nowadays and today uh, we have you bucketed on both sides from a banker and a prime housing financier <laughs> so uh, we see this thing in that manner If, as you mentioned in your presentations, uh, uh, and we become more optimistic after seeing your presentation from you know, now uh, good growth uh, uh, in next few couple of years, uh, uh, NPA is receding, quality is improving, or consumerization is increasing, income is increasing. I think that all give us a lot of confidence in this industry. But more specifically, affordable or let's say big guys thinking to uh, enter in this market. you see uh, as you mentioned total market is around 32 33 lakh crore if you do slice and dice let's say metro market and, and tier 1 cities then you find in tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 this this penetration is very low very low uh, per household wise is just i seen some data with this, with, with some one rate uh, with the uh, bureau agencies it, it is just 2 to 3% penetration that's all in that market basically so for some affordable meaning maybe only ticket size but when you go tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 affordability mean as a profile wise new to credit low credit low bureau scores let's say uh, 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 first time they are borrowing for a, such a home loan first time they are buying no home to first home uh, so lot of demand comes from that market basically so this is a huge potential is there in the market even if one or two or three or four guys not able to fulfill that demand basically next next ten year opportunity is huge only thing is required very sensible credit basically everybody has to make his own road in that market what he want to do in that market basically so that is very 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 important when when they enter in that market understanding of the customer understanding of a property profile is very important when they enter in that market basically secondly unit cost become very important sanjay in that market basically for uh, large banks institutions large nbfc hfc sometimes unit cost doesn't make out a sense for them basically to having a ticket size of 10 lakh rupees uh, 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 in a smaller town it, it's become a, it's become a, a very difficult natural demand is there natural gap is there but apart from them uh, in recent past in let's say last couple of years what we have seen is aspirational demand is also coming very well basically 
100 unit uh, uh, yard housing is now converting in 200 yard units basically earlier if i uh, uh, i know this and i visited in the, let's say jodhpur balotra byavar pali i done a road trip basically just in two weeks back basically i have myself have got surprised to see what i seen last five before five years and now what i see quality of house is getting changed basically Earlier, it used to be very basic house. Basically. Now, they put up a good tiles also. They put a good faucets also. Air condition, few air condition they install in the house. I seen in Balotra a good, let's say, met, uh, 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 slipper mattress gallery is there of a 200 square, uh, square feet. So, a lot of things. So, those things are, I think, giving us a lot of positiveness. There is a huge market is there, potential market is there. One last thing I want to mention, a lot of Let's say sometime back, a lot of population, a lot of household, we are not considering for home loan. But that that population, that household was also coming up. Where in the coming year, we will consider to for the home loan, basically. So that is a huge bucket, which is coming uh, uh, in, that, in, that, in that range where all lending institutions will start to consider them uh, for home loan. So you're saying that uh, there is a lot of untapped potential which is yet to be tapped and within the tapped potential, the market space capital is very low. So there is a room for everybody and in fact, the number of institutions probably need to increase far more. But the risk are that one has to be mindful of the credit quality and unit cost and uh, the normal rules of the business. Right? So very yeah. Well. Right. yeah, that's all. Uh, so now with uh, this uh, panel, I think uh, we have to move to the liability side very fast because that is where a lot of uh, the audience question would be there. So RBI has been indicating that HFC and NBFC should move to the capital market, etc. So will HFC be required to seek higher liabilities? Do these capital markets have sufficient debt or risk appetite? Now, this is a question for Mr. Sill, obviously. So, do the markets have that appetite, the debt to adopt these requirements of housing finance? Means, how do you see the whole situation? See, first of all, is that uh, as as NBFCs, HFCs, I think uh, almost everybody needs to diversify their uh, sources of funding, uh, irrespective of whatever are the uh, instructions or guidance from the regulator. Uh, having said that, uh, the fact is that our bond market, I think, a lot of development needs to happen. The bond market, the capital markets. Uh, for allowing a, a significant debt for the current players as well as uh, for possibly the larger number of players who would uh, get in. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, the the market is uh, is reasonably liquid. It's it's reasonably deep for higher rated papers. Uh, for lower rated papers, I think it's uh, it it is somewhat uh, less liquid. Uh, the depth is has to increase uh, further there. If we actually want to diverse, uh, want the HFCs to diversify their uh, sources of funds, but overall, uh, I think uh, the entire liability, the entire bond market participation by reducing the uh, ticket sizes of uh, bonds, I think that's a good move that will uh, kind of encourage uh, better participation from uh, retail smaller players. So that is how the uh, I would say distribution on the other side uh, has to improve to ensure that more and more funding comes into the bond market. Uh, and participation from not only the institutional but also no, the non-institutional players that should increase uh, significantly. Certainly, there is a a very uh, I would say a strong appetite uh, from investors for uh, good quality uh, debt papers, uh, but that should also offer the amount of liquidity. Probably that is one area that uh, all market participants need to focus upon and work. Uh, so that that part of the investor requirement uh, gets satisfied. But yes, just to summarize, I think uh, the depth uh, can be can be increased, uh, and uh, certainly it has to uh, if we look into the next uh, few years. Right. So, do you think it will have any impact on the liability rates? Uh, how do you see the current situation? The way it's moving. Right? See, actually, current situation it's actually a, a, a mix of various uh, factors somewhat uh, global factors local factors uh, we we are aware of the uh, the inflationary situation in uh, various parts of the world uh, very recently again we have seen large economies slipping into recession in india of course we have been uh, witnessing the deficit liquidity conditions for last uh, several months but our uh, Re uh, reserve bank of india has done an amazing job and 
Uh, they have really uh, done a phenomenal work in managing liquidity at a particular level to ensure that the wheels keep on moving. And uh, that is, I, I think, the full credit goes to Reserve Bank for maintaining that uh, balance. Uh, uh, we, are, we are towards the end of a uh, uh, cycle. Uh, it, now, obviously, there's a lot of uh, uh, speculations and uh, uh, I would say analysis regarding when the inflection point will be there. Uh, inflation, of course, is the focus of uh, Reserve Bank. And I'm sure in the next maybe few quarters, we'll get to see uh, better conditions. Right now, liquidity is a bit tight. But I think once uh, the year end uh, uh, passes through, we'll see better liquidity conditions. And as I mentioned, Reserve Bank is very much alert and keeps on infusing liquidity at the appropriate time in a very meaningful manner and eases that uh, situation. So again, to summarize, uh, I think... Uh, Whatever uh, impact of uh, pricing you are seeing today, the bond uh, yield is inverted, the yield curve is inverted, uh, and that generally happens when we are closer to an inflection point. And a uh, uh, question for Mr. Gansham Rawat. With the merger of the HDFC twin, has the appetite in the debt capital market improved for housing finance companies compared to the past? Uh, uh, yes, Sanjay, definitely. I think when I spoke to a few, let's say, mutual fund, uh, majorly mutual fund, let's say, uh, where their cap is there, everything for how much they can lend to HFCs and BFCs are there, basically. But after this merger, uh, uh, definitely significant limits are getting released and uh, and they got, uh, 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 let's say, room to accommodate more HFCs. But as... Uh, 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 Toshil mentioned that ki, uh, obviously rating is very important. Uh, 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 there is good appetite of good rated papers, good institutions. Uh, that, that's I think uh, that's that is I think uh, that giving a, uh, at least long breath basically to to, to 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 because it's a big amount when HDFC um, got merge, uh, big amount got released from them basically, and uh, it will help not for let's say quarter two, but it will help to let's say few years for other HFCs who has a good rating and uh, uh, and they can raise uh, uh, the money and that capital market from all mutual funds, insurance sectors, that will definitely will help. But apart from that, I think, uh, Sanjay, I want to add, uh, for for us, I think in last couple of years, we see a lot of other avenues also improving, uh, gradually improved a lot, basically. Like securitization is, is a getting year by year is a, is a is good appetite is coming and improving. Assigned right assignment is getting improved. Where complete ALM get match, it has hundred percent help to us basically. Development institution, multilateral institution is showing a lot of keen interest. If anybody any institution want to run certain social mandate with them basically, so they keenly interested to 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 to, to join the hand with the institutions and and. And, and and to provide then the fund in the debt capital market basically so i think those avenues are uh, gradually at year after year are improving great okay. as so the question is for mr sanjeev kumar so with the aifs are now coming into the field as an alternate venue for rd players so which has been left vacant by ndfc rhfc in the recent past so has that space been taken over how do you see this uh, competition or the the capital provision by EAS into the sector, especially the RE players. Yeah, I has been one of the major source and lot of investment they did in real estate. Uh, but if you look at bank, their exposure to IF is been very nominal. And you look at banking industry as a player, most of the bankers has made an provision to that extent, but it's minuscule. The intention behind AIF <coughs> from the regulator perspective was uh, to bring more strengthening the system and bring the more level of the corporate governance. So, so as a banking industry, not much of impact will come from that uh, in terms of the provisioning aspects. Now coming to the lending aspect from the bank, yes, it gives an open space for the good players and banks are looking into that perspective. See, capital for real estate market came in various pockets. So you can look at one pocket as capital promoter perspective, banking is one and other channel is Three, three different broad sales. When you look at bank as a share, bank is still maintaining 40 to 50% of funding for the entire uh, real estate market finance, real estate finance market. And I expect the similar level will continue to do. So market is growing. The scope is there for everyone. The money will more 
keep coming even from the P and VC sides also over a period. So there is a decline, but still, if you look at this year, number twenty-eight billion dollar money came in India from P and VC perspective. Real estate got out of that roughly around eight billion dollars. So roughly one third of a chunk has gone towards real estate, and we with. We, outside that when you look at the how much has come to finance in titis and all it's around 6 billion dollar so again that's a big sum and that sum again in a way indicates the prospectus of this sector going forward with the financing company and the real estate company so i do not believe uh, that one there will be a big hole created because of aif the good aif will continue to lend that way for their capital raising they have to work in a plan beyond banking also which they will be able to do as a bank also bank will be also able to grow and contribute for the same okay i think audience has been repeatedly questions on uh, affordable finance so uh, gancha mr gancha bravo there is one question on what are the future prospects of affordable housing segment how portfolio is expected to be a given they are lending to relatively low credit profile i think this is a standard question so probably you may take this uh as yeah i think uh, uh, now in affordable space uh, if we talk sometime back in rural semi urban area there only one or two company were there now a lot of listed entities are there in the market and uh, Lot of companies go rated by the U and other rating agencies also. Lot of data is only public domain. I think by and large, the performance of that portfolio is around two uh, percent GNP, and, and best in class is a one percent around GNP in that market basically. So it's a, I think only perception is there that uh, uh, those uh, I think uh, in those market is, is a very high risk portfolio is there, but it's not so. It's not so. Last twelve year we are working in that market. and our gross npa is almost uh, across the cycle is 1 1.1% across the cycle basically and similar to other players also basically so uh, uh, i think it's 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 not it's not a, it's a basic what you do at a ground that's very important that's very important basically how you choose the customers how you underwrite how you leverage them how much uh, affordable emi you keep uh, uh, with them how much uh, ltv you you factor when you give to loan to them basically so all i think these five six factors become very important when we lend them is it's not a simple lending like seeing a bureau score seeing a, a, and a 3 ITR on 16 3 form 16 is not that simple it's not that simple okay uh, so coming back to the asset side so this is a question from mr sudeep to say so there is been talk of banks clubbing housing loan with the solar rooftop funding so how is that progressing do you see any uh, opportunities in that sector yeah i think that is actually uh, going to happen in a very uh, big manner maybe it will take time for the entire structure to be set up but uh, i think that is one emerging area and uh, it it not only is uh, is good i mean if you look at from the esg point of view even for that also it's a very uh good concept and a very good development uh we, we need to have this kind of energy efficient homes at the retail levels we already have those at a, a large scale uh, commercial uh, uh, projects but at the retail level i think this is uh, something which initiative we have to take as lenders i think this is going to come this is certainly uh, going to open up a new business opportunity and also it's it's extremely good for the environment so this is a step in the very right direction and it is it has got a lot of traction uh, coming in its way um uh, a question for mr rawat uh, the budget has some reference to the benefits for middle class housing so what do you think is uh, being discussed or uh, do you as a industry what are your expectation what what is likely to happen uh, i sanjay i think uh, this uh, as you we all know this budget was just an interim budget this is touch based various thing basically and uh, i think after the election when the full government came after that i think the detailed deliberation will happen but most likely i think the indication that they want to again bring back uh, uh, some uh, 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 revised version of clss scheme i, I think that was very popular scheme and uh, earlier scheme was benefited a lot lot of customers basically because it is a direct uh, capital subsidy to them basically and uh, uh, that get increase the affordability in that in that time frame basically 
so so uh, uh, let's yet to wait yet to uh, yet to be detailed discussion happen with the let's say regulator or nhb and uh, and and and, uh, and and the housing development ministry and uh, mr sitra sil there is also apparently a discussion on expanding the uh, limits of affordable housing and mig and lig etc so what do you see I means what probably should the market expect uh, obviously government thinking but from a industry perspective what do you think the market should expect i think uh, the earlier versions of uh, the pmay clss were very successful because the scheme had been uh, the, the scheme structuring was very good for administration and very helpful for the end beneficiary it was certainly a success we at lic housing also did uh, i mean one of the highest probably in the segment uh, i mean there has been some allocation further allocation for in this in the interim budget uh, we probably i mean the expectation is that something similar probably the scope could be widened a little bit in terms of uh, also you know uh, kind of addressing the middle income segments that should actually increase the coverage of course affordable will be the uh, likely most likely be the uh, core focus area but uh, the larger the coverage the more the number of beneficiaries Uh, obviously will uh, have the uh, greater impact that is probably what is being expected okay and mr Sanj sanjish kumar learning from earlier down cycle in assessing pro project finance what additional factors would have been incorporated now when we are lending to real estate finance it uh, lender says become a uh, choosy so they had learned from their experience so uh, what has happened if you look at what is additional have So regulation has come in, so data has come in, project specific escrow has come in. That is helping a lot uh, in terms of underwriting standard. That has gone tremendous uh, <coughs> uptick in terms of improvement. So people are looking at having a control. So yeah, it's very important when you look at understand what went wrong at that time. And one of the key reason beyond various other uncontrollable factors, if you exclude COVID and others, was. post construction money was funding pre construction uh, cost there was limited visibility for that post construction money because the booking was limited and people were in the super growth territory one by one many projects were being launched so those controls have been come so lenders are looking that with your execution capacity how much of project you can do it cash flow control has been brought in in terms of payment is being directed to pay from this escrow account the payment would go only for the limited purpose and this all the purpose is to ensure that the project gets completed right sizing of debt also has happened so previously it used to happen that you put your own 10% rest 90% will come either from the bank finance or from the uh, post sale finance uh, via finance step up money so those right sizing of debt has happened most of the funding is now coming the typical the uh, way of any industry project finance uh, level also so the right side of debt has happened and it's helped a lot if you look at the latest funding on the construction finance helping a lot so lot of improvement people have learned uh, there is nothing that uh, people are super worried about this sector but yes there are learnings the people have uh, learned from that in a way and improving on that okay one of the question from the panelist was that affordable housing demand has been muted last year do you expect the trend to revert with more finance flowing i we don't exactly believe that it has been muted but uh, i will still ask mr ganjam rawat to reply on it the affordable uh, is going and affordable will continue to grow because government also has their strategic focus on this segment and even if you heard in the recent announcement one crore more of this uh, home loans uh, homes are announced by prime minister so government has a focus that's the way so is compared to tier 1 and tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 cities are growing more affordability is also increased from individual perspective in terms of rising income level and all uh i do not believe that this will be an muted growth or it will be this is will be a new area of focus from uh, regulator perspective government perspective as well as on the lender perspective the reason again why it's very important and interesting piece is that as i said earlier also new to credit most of the affordable segment will have a sizable chunk coming from new to credit also and their behavior pattern is quite increasing in terms of moving from new to credit to prime super prime near prime category also 
as well as in terms of the delinquency level. If you look at the 30 plus delinquency in last three years, it has reduced by 50%. So, so as the COVID and other challenges is also headed away, their behavior income level has also one of the behavior pattern has also improved. So it will continue to remain in a focus. The growth will come back. Uh, as a lender, I'll always look at over a period rather than looking in a one year in isolation or some quarters of the year in isolation. Uh, from that perspective, I still believe uh, there is a good amount of a scope and future for growth and lending in this segment. And when you look at NBFC, housing finance company, who is especially focused on that and look at their two, three years of a growth pattern, they've been growing in double digit in this segment. So that is also an, a clear indication that uh, there is a future for this segment. Oh. Uh, so there's a question for Mr. Gansham Rawat. Uh, if CLS comes back, what subsidy would be given? Would it be same as earlier? So I think uh, people have elevated your role, so probably you'll have to answer that question. <laughs> Sanjay, I think... Uh, uh... As uh, uh, Sudip mentioned, yet the policy yet to come basically, and what in what form comes, so it's difficult to comment. Okay? But yeah, focus will be there uh, affordable uh, on affordable housing. There will be more focus, more inclusive. They, they want to expand this sales scheme. I, uh, I, we hope this time. And uh, another question for Mr. Sudip to said from the audience. So, what is the scope for HFCs beyond Tier One city and semi semi urban India? I think uh, uh, tremendous uh, uh, scope is there and a large number of uh, HFCs are actually doing a lot of good work in the tier 3-4. Apart from the pan-India ones who are present almost everywhere, there are some very niche kind of players which are there in some specific geographies which are doing an amazing work in the tier 3-4 uh, segments. Uh, rural is one area which I would say is largely untapped. Uh, we have we have probably uh, are yet to uh, find out a proper uh, model for approaching the rural, but rural is a very big opportunity that is yet to be uh, tapped in a very organized manner. That is probably uh, going to be the, the area of focus for the next level of growth because uh, the tier one, tier two are you know highly competitive, saturated, and uh, beyond this twenty percent of the market, the sixty seventy percent of the market. Uh, most of the people have really not uh, approached. That is going to be the next uh, area of growth. Okay. And uh, again, Mr. Sil, so how do you see the whole housing finance? We have given certain figures and assumptions and also do you agree? What is your view? How do you see the industry moving ahead from you? See, I, one thing that uh, I've seen and I've seen the sector for about uh, 25 years or so, this is probably one uh, uh, sector one industry where there is no dearth of demand because in India housing is still a basic necessity and uh, the average Indian's association or his aspiration to own a home I think is unmatched and unparalleled in, across the entire globe so and if you look at the mortgage to GDP uh, penetration that is still about 10 or 11 percent so you, there, there is a significant headroom uh, for mortgages uh, to grow so I, I I mean figures apart figures they are all based on certain assumptions. One thing can be said for sure that uh, we are nowhere near any kind of a saturation or downturn. It is one way movement up only, and uh, we are still far away from uh, coming anywhere close to a kind of a saturation or at a place where you know we will we'll feel that probably the market has uh, topped off. We are we are nowhere near that. So tremendous growth potential. People have pegged it at, I say, 45 or 46 uh, uh, lakh crores in maybe in the next uh, four or five years. That could be one of the numbers which are there. But I think uh, to the growth is uh, phenomenal. But how do you see competition from banks in terms of pricing, etc.? So that remains remunerative, for, especially for prime housing. How do you feel? Yeah, I think, uh, see, we are in a competitive uh, area, so there is no doubt about it. And competition is there. Uh, competition will be there. And um, there are a large number of HFCs who have uh, thrived uh, despite uh, of the competition. The pie is uh, large enough. It is growing. Uh, there will be those kind of competitive pressures where every uh, the management of every institution feels that it's becoming very uh, tough and very tight. And in a competitive world, that is uh, that is to be expected only. So I think the pie is large enough, 
and uh, it offers a decent amount of growth potential. Okay. And uh, Mr. Ganjam Rao, how do you see affordable housing space uh, in terms of the figure that we presented? <laughs> Uh, yes, India, yeah, I think uh, uh, what number we have seen, uh, in real life, we are seeing much better a position at a ground level, basically. Uh, 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 as I mentioned earlier, we see a small rural to nearest town migration is happening, basically. And then a special demand, we see the, the another big demand at a ground, but better housing, better unit price, uh, 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 that ultimately in turn to be a, a good loan size, basically, there, basically. So uh, I we uh, as uh, as uh, should mention uh, there is a huge opportunities there in this market. It's still there, there is no in near I think in decade time there is decade two decade there is no need to think uh, there will be saturation in this in this market in this space in this space. Only uh, governance and uh, sensi sensible underwritings that are those are very important when you go in that market. So how do you see the competitive intensity in your industry as of now? Uh, I think still here, sometimes we, we we also discuss this thing, but ultimately the result comes, okay, we still just scratching the market. Uh, 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 snatching the market is far away. Snatching the market to each other is far away. Just we are scratching scratching the surface of, you, you see that much of opportunity is there basically. Uh, uh, like, uh, UP, nobody thought sometime back is a big market, but now everybody starting to focusing there basically. It itself is a very big market, very big market basically. So there are a lot of pockets are available in India, which is a very low tape, very uh, 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 still people are not approached to that market basically. Okay. So very interesting competition of snatching and scratching the market. So. Yeah. And Mr. Sanjeev Kumar, how do you see banks taking their pie in both the, let's say, housing finance and the builder finance? How would the scene do you think would be emerging? The market is growing and there is an enough on the table for everyone to have it. So it's, it's uh, not that, you know, one has to get in a other territory and get enough pie to their own growth. And just I, if you look at linear retail housing finance, you look at the BT data. BT data is just 4 and 5%. That is itself an indication that 95% of the growth is coming from the actual growth and everyone is able to see that piece. And uh, he rightly said that UP and those nearby territories becoming a hotspot. I'll put some of the other related data. In MFI segment, South was the focus. But over a period, everyone went to UP, Bihar, uh, Bengal and other side. And the outcome and the <clears throat> borrower behavior is superb almost equal to the pan-India level. So those apprehensions faded. Now a similar approach is happening from affordable housing to these reasons. Uh, so, so as new territory keeps opening up, there's a room for everyone to lend. I do not see that it will be a question of, you know, running one lender running by another lender for their own growth. The market itself is in a tremendous opportunity. Uh, Mr. Silva was saying, if you look at that data, 11% of GDP, and if you benchmark with what is happening outside India, Canada is 96%, US has 52%. So this shows in a way that, you know, the, the amount of scope as a lender you have in this segment to grow. So I don't think beyond a point, there will be this kind of a rush that, you know, uh, will start cutting each other and the market. So market will grow, every player in the segment will. Okay. Right, gentlemen, I think with this, uh, we come to the end of the conclusion uh, of the discussion because we have some audience queries mainly on affordable housing, but some of them probably will take them offline or something like that. So I hold, I hand over the proceedings back to Divya. Divya, can you take it up, please? Thank you, Sanjay, sir, for moderating the session and Geeta for your presentation. Once again, thanking all our guest speakers for their insightful views. It was a privilege to host you. And lastly, thank you to all our participants for taking the time out and being a part of this Carriage webinar. For any further questions, feedbacks or suggestions, please write to us in the feedback mail. Goodbye for now and I request the tech team to kindly log off.